prayer, sacrifice, and penance. If you're new to the channel, I am a lay Catholic hermit with private vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. I've devoted my life to the church, and I would like to share my gifts with the world. With that said, prayer, sacrifice, and penance is a phrase I learned as a young child when I was first introduced to the vision of Our Lady of the Mystical Rose, Rosa Mystica. Prayer, sacrifice, and penance. She had three roses on her breast, on her chest area. It was a white rose, a red rose, and a gold rose. The white rose signified prayer. She is calling us to prayer to worship her son, God, the Son of God, the Holy Father, God, and God, the Holy Spirit. Three divine persons, three separate divine persons of one unified divine substance. And we are called to pray daily. If you don't pray daily, I would suggest throughout the day, just bringing your mind to God, envision a cross, envision the wounds of Christ and the blood washing over you. Envision Jesus in the way you feel most connected to him. And by doing that, that in and of itself is a good start on how to pray daily. I suggest the first thing you do and the last thing you do when you wake up and go to sleep is to make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You can do the forehead to the breast to the left and right shoulder. You can do a cross form in the same format just on the forehead or you can also cross your forehead, your lips and your heart. Those are three common forms of the sign of the cross. With that said, sacrifice. How can we sacrifice in our daily life? I'll use my own life as an example. Here's a very small example, but coffee. I drink coffee. I usually drink about six cups of coffee a day. But if I want to make reparations for the sins against God, particularly in the Blessed Sacrament, I would just make a small sacrifice of maybe four, three cups of coffee a day, which is still more than most people. But again, it's a small sacrifice. So you can do a small sacrifice like something like that, or you can do something as big as raising funds to donate to a charity, which goes into the next thing of penance, but the work, the effort of raising funds for charity is a sacrifice. It's not easy. And then also penance, which is repaying back to God, through God, and for God for the sins of your own in the world. We are responsible for our own sins, but it is holy and pious to pray for the mercy and forgiveness to be given to sinners. Everyone is loved by God and everyone is desired by God to enter into his heaven. God didn't make hell. The devils made hell. The fall made hell. God's love allowed hell. God would never force himself on anyone. Even when he incarnated into humanity, he, he came by message of an angel and the Virgin Mary gave her will to the will of God saying, thy will be done. He's not going to force himself upon anyone. So if you don't pray and you don't do sacrifice and you don't do penance, God's going to be around, but he's not going to be communicating with you unless you open the door for him. So with that said, going back to why I said God didn't make hell, he allowed it, is because if someone in this life turns away from God, let's use my a relative of mine. My uncle is a very staunch atheist, uh, and he, he does not believe in God at all and is highly against organized religion, and that's his prerogative. But let's say he dies, according to my faith and, the, and some of the Catholic Church, is that at the moment of death, there is a divine judgment. And my parish priest told me that in his research, he believes through near-death experiences that Christ approaches the person and asks them, do you want to become one with me or do you want to do your own ego, be it one with yourself? And if you follow the ego, you turn into evil. If you follow Christ, you enter into paradise. And so I'm just saying God would never force someone who rejected him into his presence out of love and mercy because it would be too painful for them to bear. That is what purgatory is about in general. 
is that purgatory is made so that saved souls who are not completely cleansed of all wrongdoing, all negative attachments, materialistic or anything, they are purified by the flames of purgatory and through a stage of suffering, which would be they died. Let's use me as an example. I believe I'm going to go to purgatory at first. So when I die, Jesus will come to me he will say, do you want to be one with me forever and ever and ever and ever, all eternity? Or do you want to follow your own will? Instantly, I would say, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph is my choice, and St. Michael, too. So then I would enter into purgatory because, at, well, let me back up. When I am face to face with Christ, I am receiving a vision of pure, unbreakable, permanent love. And in that vision, I will have a sense of God. I'll have a taste of God. So the suffering in purgatory is the longing for that heavenly food, that heavenly banquet, is you've had a taste of it through your judgment, your, your personal judgment, which is when you meet Christ, and as I explained. But also, purgatory is a place I best describe in this image. Think of a light bulb, an old-fashioned light bulb that gets warm, and you turn on the light, and that light is the purified soul, the immaculate soul of a human being and it shines light, and if you put the light bulb outside in the daytime, its light becomes one with the, the light of the sun. So that is a good vision for heaven. But purgatory is when you take dirty cloth, like grimy, discolored cloth, and cover it, cover the light bulb, so that the light, if you touch it, it's warm still. You can still feel the love from the soul for God but you can't see it because it is covered up and things need to be removed. So if you're attached to the material world, but you have a holy soul and you are saved and you do not die in a state of mortal sin and you die in a state of grace, but there are still temporal punishments due to sin that must be repaid before you are into paradise as in being completely purified because nothing unclean can enter into the, to the holy temple, which is heaven. And so basically I, I, I just want to say that the afterlife some might think is not explainable but there have been plenty of secular and Catholic priests study studying near death experiences and there are common threads so I believe the church I believe the teachings of the church I believe there is a purgatory I believe there is a hell and a heaven and there might there might be a limbo, which is a whole nother story. But if you are in purgatory, I do know that 100%, at least by the time Christ returns, you will enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is not Catholic dogma about limbo. It's just scholarly thought. But if limbo is real, then that means souls of the unborn, which would be those political, you know what I'm talking about, kind of procedures, those souls and the souls of the unbaptized who are n under the age of eight, uh, because that is the age of reason. And by then, if you're exposed to Christ and you still don't get baptized, you are not of God. You are of the devil, the world, and the flesh. And only through baptism can you drown the devil, the world, and the flesh by the sign of the cross and the waters of baptism. But if you don't have baptism and you are naive to Christ, then your soul is pure. The only impurity of it is the foundation, which is brought upon all humans, except the Virgin Mary through divine intervention, from Adam and Eve. And the reason I say except the Virgin Mary, because the Virgin Mary is the new Eve, Jesus is the new Adam, uh, Mary birthed salvation into the world, Jesus is salvation. Uh, that is why they both were without sin throughout their whole life. But limbo, limbo is a place, if it's true, that people who are innocent souls, yet still tainted with original sin, which is human nature, it's the, it's the primal selfishness and other things like violence or all the, all the vices that come with human, humanity, uh, that is, for me, in my opinion, the effects of original sin. And when you are baptized, you drown the devil just like the waters from heaven drowned evil in Noah's day, the waters of baptism drowned the, the clutch 
that Satan has over all humans before baptism. If you are not baptized properly in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, you are of the devil. God still loves you, but his mark, which is the seal of baptism, is not imprinted upon your soul. Your soul, through original sin, belongs to the devil. Our original ancestors made a deal with the devil by intentionally and knowingly breaking the commandment of God, which was a simple, don't do this, and they did it anyways, and because of that, their generations in the future are going to have that aspect of evil on their soul. So limbo is for innocent souls in the sense of souls that do not commit sin in this life, either because they're too young or their mental age is like, young and like so you can be a 34 year old and have the mentality of a five year old if they're five if they have the mentality of a five year old all throughout life they are not going to commit a mortal sin because they don't have the three steps it takes to make a mortal sin which is you have to know it's wrong you have to it has to be a big deal and you have to do it of your own free will which that's the catcher is if you don't have the mental capacity to process what is right from wrong and control yourself then you can't commit a mortal sin so those types of people uh like someone with special needs that was never baptized and has the age of a six-year-old in their head like that person if limbo is real will go to limbo and what is limbo like it is just like heaven but in an earthly form there is no direct connection to god but the warmth of god infiltrates that place which is a place of pure bliss there is no evil there is no suffering there is no sorrow but it is not a direct connection to God, and they will stay there until the coming of Christ. And then when Christ comes, I already told you about the personal judgment, there's a public judgment, which is when he comes back again and gives every single soul their final destination, whether it's heaven or hell. And if you're in purgatory or limbo, you go to heaven. If you're hell bound, you obviously go to hell. And you only go to hell if you reject God's love. Which people do that. That's a thing. And they go to hell. They are damned for all time. And their existence is one of immeasurable and unthinkable or conceivable suffering and torture and trauma forever. And heaven's the exact opposite. And limbo and purgatory are kind of like a barrier before you enter into the purified kingdom of heaven. Which is something, like I said, if someone unclean enters into heaven, it's, it's uh, very traumatic for that person. It's, it's very painful. I have actually was gifted a dream of, through my grandmother who passed away, we made a, we made a deal or a, a solemn oath that when she passed away, she would let me know where she is and what it's like. And I experienced purgatory, just a very, very little taste, nothing extreme, but that's where I got the concept of the light bulb and the cloth and the light bulb outside and the sun being heaven where it's the light and the sun are together and all that stuff. But heaven, I was just crying tears of joy and there were pains in my stomach, my solar plexus area of this, what I would assume was a material connection to the earth and to situations on earth that I'm connected to spiritually and just physically and mentally emotionally if you if you obsess about something on the earth like for me it would have been the loss of my grandmother i told i asked her why are you here you're not supposed to be here uh you've been gone for so long and she's just in her glorified body which is she looks she looks probably 30 something she looks great not like the grandma i knew and she just stood there or sat there actually in her car and just emanated these thoughts and emotions there was no talking from her but there was communication from her and I just knew that when I woke up I knew that heaven was real I knew a very baseline understanding enough to explain to others and that is why I know that if I was a sinful person if I was a wretched person like I used to be in my 20s and I had that dream or had that experience uh, in, in the next life that would be extremely painful I was having physical pains in my dream because of the loss of my grandmother And that is a materialistic connection I have spiritually. So when I die and go to purgatory, if that connection was not disconnected or healed, then I would suffer until purification. Suffering is purifying both in this life and the next. If you offer up suffering to God, you will then become a very 
pious person, but also a very spiritually powerful person. So, and I also know, according to the mystics and saints, suffering in this life, like through mortification or abstination or fasting, uh, there are, it is immensely, basically it'd be a dollar to a dime. Like in, in the afterlife, when you already lived your life and you're just making up for what you did in the past, people of purgatory, their voices aren't as loud as the living. Their voices aren't as loud as the church triumphant. The church suffering has the qu most quietest voice and it is us humans who are called to pray for the people in purgatory. Now, going back to limbo, that theology is not that popular today, but if there was a limbo, I would assume praying for the souls would also purgate or purge the sin attached to their souls, which would be original. But I'm not sure if that's accurate because it's baptism and you don't understand, or I hope you do one day understand how powerful just the act of anyone, even a Hindu or a Muslim, can baptize someone properly. As long as you have water or enough, even just sprinkles of water, bare minimum, you could do a drop of water while saying, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I baptize you. And even a single drop of water would fulfill the requirements necessary. Now, I know the Catholic Church has this whole long, draw, drawn out situation, but in time of dire need, like if you're on a carnival cruise ship and it starts sinking and you're going to die, you can start baptizing people. You can even, this is kind of gross, but in extreme circumstances, I'm pretty sure, don't hold it to me, I'm pretty sure you can lick your thumb and make the sign of the cross on their forehead three times and that would be enough. But cold water is always best. According to the Didache, which is the teachings of the Twelve Apostles, full immersion in cold running water is the ideal baptism. But again, I know for sure a drop of water is enough to fulfill the requirements. That's why Catholics, we always have to get our newborns baptized as soon as possible because of the, everything I'm talking about now. And basically, you, wanna, you don't want to dunk a baby under the water, so it's, it's okay, it's, it's suitable, it's enough to sprinkle them with water. So again, anyone can baptize, and I'm, I'm talking about anyone, even a Satanist can baptize someone if they say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Anyone, no matter how wretched a sinner, anyone can baptize another person. The only thing is they need consent. You have to either have consent of the spiritual authority over them, which would be the adults, their parents or their guardians, or if they are adults, you would need and full thinking, you would need their consent. I'm pretty sure you can't baptize someone in a coma uh, unless they're dying, and then that, I guess you could. In extreme circumstances, a lot of the rules go out the window. The, all, the, the main thing is the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And it is ideal to, to put water on them three separate times, or dunk them under three separate times, but also, also, it's okay to just pour a drop of water on their head while saying it. And with that said, Hail Mary and God bless.